Hello everyone, welcome to part 3 of the mouse release series. Today I'm gonna show you how to attach the mouse release to the harness. So that's what you receive on the parcel, it is pretty bare. Uh, the reason for that is that there are many, many ways to attach a release to the harness and um, uh, the guy who makes them just uh, does not make any assumptions how you're gonna do it. So it is totally up to you. Now what I'm gonna describe today is related to arrow towing only simply because I'm not doing ground towing myself, but I do heaps of arrow towing. Let's start with the wrong setup first. Mouth release, as it comes from the parcel, does not give you many hints how to attach it properly to the harness. Interesting that there is one wrong idea to which different people from different parts of the world keep coming to. It even been mentioned on Oz report as a wrong one, but it did not help. People still reinvent uh, this bad idea again and again. So idea is simple and lazy, uh, just uh, take your existing barrel release system and replace the barrel with mouse release. It means that mouth release attached firmly to one shoulder and then the bridle is connected to the mouse release instead of the barrel. So everything looks very familiar and it also seems to be working. Let's have a look again. As you see, it's very simple to make and it seems to be just working. However, there is a problem. Have a look what can happen. And this actually has happened at least once. Uh, in the description of this video you can find the link to all the report uh, with the actual report of the incident. So please keep in mind that the standard barrel release or pro toe release bridle is not designed for mouth release. The loop is too big. And even if uh, the loop on your bridle is not too big, there could be another problem. The bridle itself is very thin and it can get stuck uh, between the moving parts of the mouth release. And again, the consequences will not be pretty. And obviously for the same reasons, you should not attach mouth release directly to the weak link. But could it be that idea of using a bridle is workable? Could be. Some people actually using special bridles. Those bridles are much thicker, so they cannot get stuck between the parts of the mouth release and loop at the end of the bridle is much tighter. It is just enough for the metal tooth of the mouth release. So yes, with special bridle it is probably possible. However, I myself never used this kind of setup and I cannot recommend it because of that. So now what I'm using is this. And I'm gonna show you now how to make it and what are different bits and pieces of it are. Uh, also, like I said, there are other ways to attach a release to the harness and uh, later I will briefly touch another one. Uh, however, I think that this one is safest and uh, I'm using it myself. So let's start with making a simple loop. You need a rope that is strong enough. Also, pay attention to is it more static or more dynamic type of a rope. Uh, obviously, you need um, a more static one. Uh, however, it is not really that much important. Even if uh, the release jumps back after release, which normally it does not, but even if it does, uh, it um, uh, goes towards your shoulders, rather towards your face. So let's finish making our loop. I'm using Fisherman knot for that, which most of us are using for making weak links. You probably know how to do it. If you do not, just Google Fisherman knot. Very simple one. Now a little bit tricky bit, the length of the loop. You do not need to be very precise on that. Just try to make it that way, so on towing it will be a little bit in front of you. Okay, here is our loop finalized. And now let's actually attach it. Now what we're doing here is uh, we're pulling the rope through the big hole, uh, actually the only hole in the release. And now you need to make sure that it goes cable down when nose is forward. When nose of the release forward, cable should be down, not up. Not that it's much critical, but it is better if the cable goes down, because this way uh, the safety trigger probably will not be pulled uh, by the base bar, which happened to me once uh, at the start of the toe. Here on the picture it is attached correctly, however, if you put it trigger down and the release happened to be behind the base bar and then you pull the base bar, you can also pull the safety trigger as well and the release will open immediately. So pay attention to attach it cable down, not up. Up is wrong. This is wrong position. So it should be attached cable down. Now we are pulling uh, our loop through one of the harness towing loops and uh, then through itself. Very simple. So uh, everything is very simple. Um, 
I think it is better to do with the half of the rope that does not have a knot. Uh, this way, when you start uh, to put the harness on, the release will not slide off the rope. Now, after, after you put the harness on, uh, you will attach another end of the rope to the quick link. Uh, the quick link uh, should have a screw gate uh, to uh, remove the chance of uh, it uh, clipping into the front wires in a cross-tap situation. Now, at this point, you might start wondering, where is the weak link? The weak link is a separate bit with a separate ring, and we will cover it in the next video about mouth release operations. For now, let's stay focused on the actual attachment of the release to the harness. That's actually not it yet. Uh, it might be it, uh, because many people fly with exactly this setup. But I prefer to add safety for uh, another possible type of emergency. What happens if the release is stuck? It never ever happened to me, and uh, I never ever heard about it happening to anyone else. However, what if it happens? For this kind of emergency, I prefer a way to release one of the ends of the rope. Of course, there is always an option of using a hook knife. Uh, by the way, if you do not have a hook knife, go and get one. It is an important safety measure, but using a hook knife might be a little bit too dramatic. To let a stuck release go, we need to release one end of the rope, and for that we can use this beautiful piece of equipment. Unfortunately, it's not coming with the release, uh, I make it myself. Uh, it is effectively just a double pin. So what I do, I pull the rope through the harness towing loop as before, but then I insert one pin of the two into the little loop, and then use the rubber bungees to fix it in place. I've got pictures of what I'm doing here with better resolution and with more details. You can find the link to these pictures in the description section of this video, if you're watching it on YouTube. Meanwhile, let's have a look how the setup looks like now. Uh, let's check that everything is tight enough and it will not go away. And by the way, it should not, uh, normally it just does not go away. Until we pull the handle, and then the stuck release will be pulled away by the towing rope. Now, to make the bridle even more perfect, now we can do one more step. The bridle is actually too loopy, and on emergency release it will go through the hole, however it's got a chance to be wrapped around the release. Do we need to do anything about that? It is up to you. Like I said, a lot of people are flying with just this setup, and uh, it is very simple, you can do it in 5 minutes, and it works. However, if um, uh, you want to make it perfect, uh, you can do something like that. You can stitch one half of the bridle, so uh, the loop in there is very small, and uh, uh, it gets a chance of it being wrapped around the release much smaller. It is a little bit of extra work, but you can do it if you are either paranoid or a perfectionist, or both. Now let's talk about alternative ways to attach a release to the harness. This setup is extremely simple. A mouth release is attached to the right shoulder, and that's it. There is no bridle from another shoulder, and there is no emergency release. So yes, it is one shoulder towing. Scott Barrett, who is by the way on the video, uh, is doing exactly that, uh, and uh, he's quite happy with it. Also, I understand that at least one other pilot have been doing one shoulder towing for many years on a routine basis. So, as you might have realized, I came across uh, now this kind of attachment just recently, and I did not try it myself yet. However, I definitely will. So, in theory, this attachment looks okay to me, if you're okay with one shoulder towing, and what I especially like about it is how easy it is to put it away into the pockets of the harness after the tow. That's really important for cross-country flying, I consider it as a big advantage. It actually looks as easy as putting away barrel release. I'm gonna try this setup pretty much because of that. By the way, you can find the full interview with Scott with all his commentaries in a separate video. I will put a link to it to the description of my video. So, wrapping it up, there are many other ways to attach releases to the harness. Uh, some of them uh, fall in the category do not try it at home, so I do not want to post any pictures of those. Just this is the setup that I'm using myself and that I recommend. And also Scott Barrett's setup looks good to me, uh, although I should say that I did not try it myself. So I would say that this is it for today, thank you very much for watching.